Okay, okay, guys. So very good evening. So today's live session. I said it's a final live session because it's day seven of our seven day challenge. So uh, first of all, before we proceed, uh, please confirm the audio and video quality. And also, if you want me to raise my voice, I can do it. Topic tiger, you should move. You should move, right? Or else the virtual screen is getting disturbed. So what do you guys say? Is the streaming fine? Can we proceed? A oh, very good evening, all of you. Hi, Rishikesh. Hi, Dr. Nidhi. Hi, Swadina. Hi, Tejal. Hadi, Ritu, Vinita, Tahir, Preeti, Puja, Gunjan. Hi, a oh, very good evening. So today, we'll go ahead with our final presentation. We'll have some multiple choice questions from dental carers. We'll also try to cover some aspects of fluoride in the process, right? I hope you guys are all ready. So let's start with our presentation now. Yeah, so first and foremost, as I said, this is final day of seven day challenge. It doesn't mean that we are stopping with this live session. So based on your feedback, we'll definitely consider doing more of these live sessions in the coming days, in the coming weeks, as well as in coming months. So this seven day challenge ends today. And I'm glad that you guys actually participated so far with lots and lots of enthusiasm. So let's just keep this momentum going, right? So in this session, we have 10 MCQs, each carrying four marks as you're all aware of the pattern. So 40 marks maximum. Let's see how many of you are going to score the maximum possible. So we'll start with our first question. Yeah, so this is something which I posted in critical uh, in critical thinking assignment as well. So what do you think is more appropriate answer? Yeah, so the critical pH of enamel and dentin is three and four respectively, 3.5 and 4.5 respectively, five and six respectively, 5.5 and 6.5 respectively. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? The critical pH or the pH at which there is demineralization or demineralization is evident. It can be enamel, can be dentin. So what do you think are the critical pH values? So I'm sure most of you are aware of critical pH value of enamel, but what about critical pH value of dentin? So keeping that in mind, we have framed the following question. So the critical pH of enamel and dentin have, yes. I'm sorry, I've removed the timer by mistake for this particular slide. From the next slide onwards, we're going to have timer as usual. So as majority of you rightly mentioned, it is option D, 5.5 and 6.5 respectively. In fact, for dentin, they've given a range in students which is between 6.2 and 6.7. So 6.5 is acceptable, which means dentin is even more susceptible to pH changes. Right, so uh, that's the take home message and it has a very important clinical implication when it comes to root caries, which we'll discuss in the form of another multiple choice question. Now let's move on to the next question. So as you all rightly mentioned, it is option D, right? Also you can see Stephen's curve. So Stephen has given us uh, based on his studies and also uh, it is quite obvious that with drop in pH, right after, consuming fermentable carbohydrates as we have seen in the early morning session, right? So you can see almost within few minutes after consumption of uh, glucose in this particular study, after glucose rinse, right? So you can see drop in pH. The one which is red in, uh, marked in red, extreme caries activity and the one marked in blue, moderate caries activity. And nevertheless, caries activity is seen when the pH is dropping uh, below 5.5, rather we say demineralization initiation when it comes to the enamel surface, right? So consider this very, very important, especially the values. And if you have trouble remembering them, do make a note of the same, right? So option D is right answer. Now let's move on to the next question. So you have 45 seconds timer. We'll restart the timer now. So all of the following factors tilt the carries balance towards demineralization, except I'm not going to tell you what MS is about, so you should uh, decode the same. Option A, MS, definitely it's not a master's degree. After B, uh, option B, a poor oral hygiene. 
Option C is silver. Option D, frequent consumption of fermentable carbohydrates. So among these, which one do you think is more appropriate answer? So all of the following factors tell the care is balanced towards demineralization, except. So you need to talk about factors which promote remineralization, in other words. So I'm sure you guys can answer. And we discussed something called as care is balance about various negative and positive factors. That is factors responsible for demineralization and factors responsible for remineralization in a morning session as well. So among these, one of the factors is responsible for remineralization. And in fact, it is known to you know, alter the uh, microbiotome or the microbial uh, colony as such, which is responsible for caries. In fact, uh, latest studies uh, show that it's not just one microorganism which can be directly implemented or implicated for dental caries. It's in fact a complex mechanism involving several microorganisms in the form of colonies, microbiome, as you can say. So among these options, which are the following, promotes remineralization. As you guys rightly have chosen, option C, silver is right answer. And now let's look at the caries balance, which we presented in 5 a.m. session today. So as you can see, on the left part of your screen, you have various pathologic factors which promote demineralization, hence called pathologic factors, right? Loss of uh, ions forming the tooth, calcium, phosphates, or acid-producing bacteria. Streptococcus mutants, as you know, is one of them. Option A, as you have seen, a subnormal salivary flow function, frequent eating or drinking, fermentable carbs. Uh, the illustration has been presented as through Stephen Sko through his series of experiments and also poor oral hygiene. And in protective factors, you know, we're very much familiar with. And look at the fourth and fifth one. There are strategies where we can alter or promote healthy microbiome like use of probiotics, pH modifiers, erythritol, xylitol, arginine, and also peptide stain and antimicrobials. Do familiarize yourself with these strategies. And you can find a medical model where they mentioned about methods of caries treatment via the same. And you can see the one which is highlighted, that is option B. Modifying microflora is also considered one of the treatment strategies. So you can see if there are specific indications like high counts of streptococcus mutants or lactobacilli can modify a dysbiotic biofilm and encourage a healthy biofilm using the agents which we mentioned in the previous slide. Okay, yeah. So keep this in mind and consider this very, very important. Now let's move on to the next question. Third question. We have two statements. Statement one, a restorative treatment doesn't cure the caries process. Statement two, identifying and managing the risk factors for caries must be the primary focus. So what do you say? Because, uh, you know, we were talking about the same in the form of critical uh, thinking question in the early morning session. I've asked you to find out about the first statement. So here is your opportunity again. So restorative treatment doesn't cure caries process. Do you agree with that? because that's what we do uh, in our profession. One of the treatments which we do is we remove the carious process and then we restore it, right? Using uh, different forms of restorations. So what's your opinion on the same? And statement two, identifying and managing the risk factors for carious must be the primary focus. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? Statements, both of them are right or both of them are wrong? Or what's your take on this? Yes. So, in fact, uh, it's not a curative uh, part. The restorative treatment is essential, but the primary goal or the primary objective is or it lies in identifying the risk factors, which we have seen in the morning session. We have various primary modifying factors, secondary modifying factors, which are responsible for caries process. So, it's not just about taking tooth as a single entity. It's about comprehensive management trying to address the patient rather than the tooth alone, which can be done by identifying the risk factors for caries in that particular patient. I'm sure you remember various risk factors we discussed an elaborate list, and also that's a thumbnail for this morning's live session if you had observed. So as majority of you rightly mentioned, option C is a right answer. Well done. 
Now let's move on to the next question. Fourth one, let me restart the timer. Find the true statement. Any roughness detectable with a sharp explorer can be considered a cavitated lesion. Is it true? Or option B, only lesions in which a blunt probe penetrates without pressure are to be considered cavitated. Option C, both A and B are true. Option D, none of the above. So what's your opinion on the same? Find the true statement about detection of carriers using an explorer. So you have 30 more seconds. You know, uh, the first thing uh, we learned when we joined a uh, college is that you should run the explorer on the surface and if there is any catch, right? It has to be treated. They use a very sharp explorer and then try to run it over the surface of a tooth, which is no longer suggested. As for the latest guidelines of caries diagnosis and management guidelines, you can uh, clearly find that using of sharp explorer is no longer indicated. In fact, you're trying to create some damage or even cavitation for that matter when it comes to pit and fissure caries. So only lesions in which a blunt probe penetrates without pressure are to be considered cavitated as almost all of you rightly mentioned. These are the latest guidelines. I'm glad you're aware of the same. So option B is the right answer. Now, so as you can see, that's a traditional or historic method, no longer recommended. Now let's move on to the next question. Fifth question, we're halfway through our session. So professional tooth cleanings are intended to control the biofilm and prevent caries, as well as periodontal disease. However, after professional removal of all organic material and bacteria from tooth surface, a new coating of organic material begins to accumulate immediately, whose function is to provide a matrix for remineralization, to reduce friction between teeth, to protect enamel, to exert antibacterial activity. So which among the following options do you think is more appropriate answer? So these are lengthy questions. You just have another 15 seconds to answer this question. Let's see how many of you are going to answer it right. So lengthy questions, obviously time taking. So we should be fast and accurate enough to address the same. So you can see professional tooth clean, cleanings or scalings, which we undergo or which we perform on patients are intended to control biofilm and prevent caries which is understood. However, after professional removal of all organic material, including bacteria from tooth surface, there is new coating formation, which is again an organic material that starts to begin accumulating immediately on the tooth surface in a matter of few minutes to few hours, two hours, or maybe starting from 30 minutes. So what's the function of that organic material? What do you call that organic material? So anyways, we can uh, leave out the name, but at least what do you think is the function of that organic material? To provide a matrix for remineralization, to reduce friction between teeth, to protect enamel, to exert antibacterial activity. I think almost all options are covered. Some of you have chosen option A, option C. Yeah, option B. What do you think is more appropriate answer? By the way, I'll give you a hint. This organic material is a layer, new coating which is formed is called as AEP acquired enamel pelican. So now you can try answering. So which of the following options do you think is more appropriate answer? To provide a matrix for remineralization, to reduce friction between teeth, to protect enamel, to exert antibacterial activity. So those who have only one of the options will be getting only one mark. If you haven't answered, or if you have, uh, if you mention none, then you'll be getting minus one. Okay, yeah. So this acquired enamel pellicle provides a matrix for remineralization, which is very, very important, reduces the friction between teeth. As a consequence, it's a covering or coating. Also in the process, protects enamel, and it has several enzymes which exert antibacterial activity. 
So all of the above is right answer. So those have chosen all the options or all of the above, you will get plus four. Those have chosen only one option, you will get only one mark, okay? Yeah, so as you can see, formation of acquired pellicle on enamel, acquired enamel pellicle, right from right after 30 minutes or in the range of 30 minutes to one hour, and you can see increasing in thickness with formation of various microbiota. So first you have formation of coca and then filamentous bacteria, and you can see the sequence, right? So consider this very, very important. So professional tooth cleanings, even though we remove the entire organic matrix, immediately, almost within an hour or so, there is formation of acquired pellicle, which has the following important functions, right? Very good. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm. Now let's move on to the next question, the sixth one. Yeah, let me restart the timer. Here we go. Carious lesions originating on the root are alarming because they have comparatively rapid progress. They are often symptomatic. They're farther from pulp. They're more easy to remove. So which one do you think is more appropriate? When, uh, when it comes to root caries, also called as senile caries. So caries lesions originating on root are alarming because of which of the following reasons? You have 30 more seconds. See, first and foremost, we have seen about critical pH values of enamel and dentin, and you have seen that by the time pH reaches 6.5, drops to 6.5, 6.7, or uh, around 6, we start seeing demineralization in dentin, which is definitely bad. So compared to enamel, dentin can be considered, and that can be considered as a drawback. When it comes to root caries, we are more concerned about dentin because the thickness of cementum is minimal or even absent in case of gap junctions or minimal. And it's not as resistant as enamel. And we know about the critical pH value of dentin. So uh, this is something which we always have in mind. That's the reason why uh, this root care is, is considered to be having comparatively rapid progression, one of the several reasons. And also remember, so as you rightly mentioned, option A is right answer. Why not the rest of the options? Because these are often asymptomatic, asymptomatic, senile carriers, and they are nearer to pulp given the anatomic location and are more easy to remove. No, they're difficult to remove given their location uh, where you have gingival covering, right? Uh, you need to be very careful not to harm the periodontium or the gingival covering. So they're considered to be relatively, rel relatively difficult to remove. So option A is a right answer. As almost every one of you have mentioned, well done, you have plus four. Now let's move on to the next question. Saliva is considered nature's anti caries agent due to presence of lactoferrin, lysozyme, agglutinins, lactoperoxidase. Let's see how many of you are going to answer it right. Yeah, so saliva is considered nature's anti caries agent due to presence of which of the following antibacterial enzymes? Yeah, 30 more seconds, 25 seconds. Time is running really fast. 15 seconds. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? So saliva, as you know, apart from enzymes, we have so many beneficial uh, materials, proteins, non-protein materials, which really play a very important role in maintaining the health and integrity of oral cavity, which is evident when there is deficiency in either quality or quantity of saliva, isn't it? So saliva is considered nature's anti caries agent due to presence of which of the following? So time up. So those who have answered option A, please give yourself one mark. Those who chose option B, give yourself one mark. Option C, give yourself one mark. You know where I'm going with this. Option D, give yourself one mark. Because, yeah. yeah. Lactoferrin, lysozyme, agglutinins, lactoperoxidase, 
all of these are considered to be having direct antibacterial activity. Also, there are some materials which exert their activity against microbes indirectly by affecting other factors, but these are considered to be the ones which have direct antimicrobial activity. Consider them very, very important. So all of the above is a right answer. Good, Vinita. So those who have chosen all, please give yourself plus four. If you have chosen only one of the options, give yourself only plus one, okay? Anyways, well done. And you can find various elements of saliva that control biofilm communities. So on to the left side, you can see various salivary enzymes, which we have just uh, presented in the form of options. Amylase, lactoperoxidase, lysozyme, lipases, and non-enzyme proteins like lactoferrin, secretory immunoglobulins, glycoproteins, which have either directly or indirectly comprehensively effect on antimicrobial uh, aspect of the salivary functions. So look into their actions and also the effects on biofilm community. And I suggest you to go through this table and consider this very, very important. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, let's move on to the next question. Caries reduction percentage is higher when fluoride is delivered through which of the following means or methods or whatever you can call it. So where do you see greatest reduction in caries? Public water supply, fluoridated tooth uh, dentifrices, which we use daily in the form of toothpaste, sodium fluoride varnish, which is professionally applied, of course, none of the above. So which one do you think has more effect in terms of percentage reduction of caries? Caries reduction percentage, higher when fluoride is delivered through. Public water supply, fluoridated dentifrices, sodium fluoride varnish, none of the other. Come on, you should be very cautious in answering this because being a dental professional, we know that topical application or professional fluoride application is very, very important. Then you should definitely consider option C. Fluoridated dentifrices, we don't know if patient is really using them and also we don't know if the patient but for that matter, us, do we really brush every day? So that's another challenge we have. Public water supply, come on, are you kidding me? Public water supply, uh, we're talking about e presence of E. coli in various communities. And uh, you want to talk about fluoride in uh, public water supply? Come on. <laughs> Okay, anyways, I'm, I'm sorry I misguided you intentionally, but you should stick on to your basics and your answers without getting influenced by what I say. So as majority of you rightly have chosen, initially option A is right answer. In terms of its effect on reduction, percentage reduction of caries, public water supply is known to be more effective, 50 to 60%. Just observe the following uh, table, various fluoride treatment modalities, systemic topical. So you can see public water supply accounts for even though the concentration of fluoride is a 0.7 mm, you know, uh, caries reduction percentage is almost 50 to 60%. But look at self-application and professional application, right? So among the given options, public water supply is more appropriate answer. But having said that, consider this table very, very important. Also do go through the concentrations of fluoride in the respective professionally applied fluoride containing agents. Okay, good. Anyways, well tried. And those who have answered or chosen option A, do give yourself, yeah, plus four, public water supply. Now let's move on to the penultimate question. Fluoride exerts anti caries effect by which of the following mechanisms? Option A promotes fluoropatite formation, which renders enamel acid resistant, promotes the remineralization of initial caries lesions, exerts antimicrobial activity. The mechanism is not known. It is still in the process of being known or Still studies are going on. One of the advantages we, we science students have is if we don't know the answer, we can say research is still going on or the current research is inconclusive or we need more information. So anyways, it's not about how we present our rims, it's about knowing 
as many truths, uh, facts or truth as possible. So fluoride exerts anti-caries effect by which of the following mechanism. In fact, we discussed this in one of the previous radicular discussions uh, and consider this very, very important, which is the mechanism by which fluoride exerts anti-caries effect. Those have answered option A, I don't know what to say. So you, you, you look for yourself, right? So there are three mechanisms through which fluoride acts. And if you're angry uh, with me for giving you multiple right answers, even that's the format you have in INSF. So we have multiple right answers. We can expect the same, isn't it? So, so in our sessions, especially, we do look for multiple right answers as well. So option A, B, and C are right answers. There are three mechanisms through which fluoride acts. Formation of fluoropatite or precipitation of the same, which makes the enamel of the tooth structure comparatively resistant to acid dissolution, promotes remineralization of white spot or initial caries lesions. And fluoride itself has direct antimicrobial activity, which you can see in the following literature review from Sturgeon. So fluoride exerts its anti-caries effect by three different mechanisms. Number one, the presence of fluoride ion greatly enhances the precipitation of tooth structure of fluoropatite from calcium and phosphate ions in saliva. This insoluble precipitate replaces the soluble salts containing manganese carbonate that were lost because of demineralization. And this exchange results in enamel being more acid resistant. So fluoropatite, acid resistance. That's the take home message. Second mechanism is remineralization to the same process of initial caries lesions. And the third mechanism is antimicrobial activity, right? Enzyme production of glucosyl transferase is affected. So do keep that in mind and consider this very, very, very important. So all three options are right answers, as you have just seen, option A, B, and C. Now let's move on to the final question and those who answer it right will be given a bonus, one mark along with plus four. So success is a natural consequence of hard work, consistency, self-belief, all of the above. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? I'm sorry for the mistake, but I can rectify it right now. And here you go. I've leaked the answer, maybe intentionally or maybe unintentionally. No one knows because I'm not going to reveal. So success is natural consequence of which of the following? Hard work, consistency, self-belief. So which one do you think is right answer? And those who answer it right will be given a bonus plus one along with four marks for the right answer. Okay, perfect. So option D. So it's all about working hard, working consistently, and most importantly, believing in yourself no matter what the challenges or circumstances are. And if we fail, it doesn't mean that we have to end or stop our journey. It only means that we need to try even harder the second time. Okay, okay guys, hope you enjoyed today's session. And as I said, this is day seven. So final day or final session of this seven day challenge. And I've seen some of your feedback. Tejal, why final session? So I gave you the explanation because it's seven day or seven day challenge. So obviously it's a final uh, live session, right? Ritu says we want to continue these effective sessions. I'm really glad to hear that these are effective sessions, Ritu. I hope others also perceive the same, but uh, anyways, We'll keep trying our best and yeah. So we'll leave a poll, we'll take a break. We'll take a short break, not now, but for these live sessions, we'll take a short break and we'll come up with a new strategy. And also we'll definitely have live sessions, that's for sure. When is the question? So we'll definitely plan more live sessions. We'll get back to the schedule and uh, we'll plan sessions in this format. And also I'm planning to uh, incorporate uh, you know, uh, questions or information on a larger screen. I just want to give you guys a demo and do let me know the feedback, okay? Yeah, I think this is something which uh, we are actually planning for the upcoming live sessions, where we'll try to present 
yeah, the information on a large screen, especially the image based question. So we'll have uh, discussions in this uh, upgraded format and uh, your feedback is always welcome, right? And as I said, it's all about working hard, working consistently, and most importantly, believing in yourself. And you have uh, any queries or you need any assistance, you can always feel free to get back through mail 24 by 7. Okay? Yeah. Yes, uh, Rukrisha, you're welcome. Hi, Sadaf, you're welcome. Ignatius is asking, why don't you make it seven weeks? Sure, why not? We'll definitely consider. Uh, Ignatius. Tahir, why not perio, oral surgery, et cetera, patients? Of course, we will, because in seven days, we cannot complete five years of previous subjects, or for that matter, even all final year subjects. So we have chosen a pattern, and we started with dental materials in line with our mission 12 batch schedule. So that's the reason why we discussed uh, dental materials initially. And since we perceive this dental caries and fluorides as an important topic, so as I said, all live sessions will focus on important topics. Why not oral surgery for you? Of course, we will have. And for your information, you can just check out hundreds of videos which are available for free in YouTube with separate segregated playlists, including from oral surgery and perio. Okay. Yes, of course. I will definitely consider your feedback and we'll come up with a new challenge. Yes, Pooja, revision of all subjects will be done one or two months before the exam. We'll have comprehensive revision as we have been doing for the past two years, two to three years, right? So that will be done before the exam. But now we're trying to follow a schedule. In fact, we're planning for a central schedule, which will try to come up as soon as possible. Okay. Preeti, study club B classes updates. Yes, Preeti, uh, we have been working on the same and you can expect that by uh, tonight or tomorrow. Okay, uh, if there is any update, you'll automatically uh, get a mail or you can just check out the B classes or, you know, uh, the Telegram updates group. Yes, definitely. In fact, uh, last before a year or maybe during pandemic, we started with case-based live session discussions as well. We will definitely consider image based discussions, case based discussions, and upcoming live sessions. And that will be the focus from the next live sessions without any doubt. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. So it is lovely interacting with you. So, of course, yes, we can consider this seven day challenge successful. And once again, I really appreciate all your amazing enthusiasm and active participation. And just keep this consistency and momentum going. And if you have any further queries or you need any further assistance, always feel free to get back through mail 24 by 7. So wish you all the best. Love you all. Take care. Good night.